America! In America, there are many halls, just like there is a lot of fame. There are many halls within the state. There is a football hall of fame in Ohio. There is other hall of fame that aren't really worth mentioning because the two that matter most are in New York. There is one of the baseball hall of fame, but there is another hall of fame in New York, and that is the Real American Wrestling Hall of Fame. Hello, America. It's me, Dan America, and this is Bob the 86er. We are the Real American Wrestling Critics, and this is our Real American Hall of Fame show. Undertaker! That's right, America. The Undertaker is the first to be inducted into our Real American Wrestling Critic Hall of Fame. Why, America? Well, other than being the greatest of all time and the phenom, I have a very personal reason why The Undertaker is the greatest of all time. During my second run around in trying to follow wrestling, which was after the Hogan era, somewhere within the Attitude era, some may argue, how do you feel WrestleMania 13 rates as far as... Overall, WrestleMania 13, I have to say, is one of the better ones. But is it Attitude era? It is on the cusp of Attitude era. On the cusp of the Attitude era. However, the era wasn't relevant. It's my own personal story about The Undertaker that is relevant here, because it is The Undertaker that we're inducting into the Hall of Fame, and not the Attitude Era. My story goes as this. My dad never really supported my interest in professional wrestling. Every time I had it on, I'd have to hear my dad tell me how it was... A bunch of phonies, is what he used to like to say. He insisted that they had blood packets somewhere hidden in their tights or their pads. He insisted that all of it was fake, no matter how many times I said it's as real as it looks. I was watching promos once for WrestleMania 13, and it was the promos for, you know, like Brett Shawn and all that business, and my dad was watching it and not really enjoying anything he saw, but then they started with the Undertaker Diesel promos, and my dad said, now this is good. Fast forward a couple of years, my third runaround, now it is the Attitude Era, and pretty much wrestling's cool again. So I think I'm cool because I like wrestling and I know a lot about it, when in all actuality it probably added to my no action in high school problem. But one day I asked my dad, do you know who Stone Cold Steve Austin is? He says no. Say, do you know who The Rock is? He says, no. I say, Triple H? He says, no. I say, Undertaker. He says, oh yeah, he's the champion. Other than that, there has been no other wrestler that I have actually altered my surroundings for to watch on TV. Because when The Undertaker used to come out, on TV, that is, during Raw and SmackDown, when they were both good wrestling shows. Don't forget about Heat. And Heat. But I'm more talking about the ones that mattered. Not that Heat didn't matter. Halftime Heat was awesome, but we're talking about The Undertaker here. And, so, before I knew that The Undertaker was going to come out, or at least if I knew The Undertaker was about to come out, I would turn off all the lights so that the glow of blue could fill my living room as I watched in awe this crazy melodrama that the WWE was putting on TV. And maybe most of you, some of you, I know that I'm not the only one who used to do that. And if right now you're saying, yeah, I used to do that, then you're just adding to why The Undertaker
deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Or at least deserves number one in our Hall of Fame. Bob, what do you think? He is truly the greatest of all time. You can argue anyone you want. You can say Shawn Michaels. You can say Triple H. For some reason, some of you say Hulk Hogan. However, let's talk about what he's best known for. The streak. This man is about to wrestle at his 20th WrestleMania. The fa that just alone means he's been around for 20 years. He's only missed eight WrestleManias, and he wasn't even around for the first six of them. He missed WrestleMania 10 and WrestleMania 16. Yeah, that's right, I called it WrestleMania 16. The list is pretty much all Hall of Famers. I shall run it down for you. In order. Superfly Jimmy Snuka. Jake the Snake Roberts. Giant Gonzalez. King Kong Bundy. Diesel. Psycho Sid. Kane. Boss Man. Triple H, Ric Flair, A-Train and the Big Show, Randy Orton, Mark Henry, Batista, Edge, Shawn Michaels, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, and now Triple H a third time. The fact that he has beaten all these guys is one thing, but the fact that he's been around to beat all these guys and still puts on match of the year matches at WrestleMania he is WrestleMania. They call Shawn Michaels Mr. WrestleMania. Oh, you can't have a WrestleMania without HBK. Well, Undertaker beat him at WrestleMania twice. What does Undertaker have to do to be considered the man? I don't think he has to do anything more. Not at all. Because as far as the real American wrestling critics are concerned, The Undertaker is number one in our Real American Wrestling Hall of Fame and in wrestling. And so, we salute you, Undertaker, and induct you into the Real American Wrestling Hall of Fame.